We're back at the eye. Now, you've probably watched for the past two hours the Spud Nation Throwdown 1 and 2. This is the third year of the Spud Nation Throwdown, and I've got two of the competing chefs with me now. We're going to talk to all six of them in just a couple minutes. Uh, Brooke, let me start with you. Um, what do you think of Spud Nation Throwdown? What do you think of the judges, the kind of questions that they had? But first, you got to drink some potato uh, beer. Cheers. To, cheers. Cheers, cheers everybody. everybody. To Salute. the Spud Nation Throwdown, Spud Nation, to our chefs. Yep, yeah, round one and round two. Thank you. I think it was great. It was my first year to uh, first year to attend, first year to compete. Uh, a lot of fun. Chef David was on the table after me, so we were kind of partners in crime uh, in the uh, the two competitions, if you will. But uh, it seemed like the judges were into it. The crowd was into it. You did a great job of you know keeping the flow going and engaging us while we were up there, focused on our dishes and such. So I loved it. So how do you think you did? We'll find out shortly. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, at five, five forty. Make sure you join us, and we'll announce the winners. Um, if you had to do anything differently, now that you've gone through the competition, now that you heard from the judges, would you? I don't think so. I think okay. uh, the dish that I uh, was inspired to make was uh, pretty unique. I think it all worked out in the end, and that's all I could ask for. So. And the aromas, the look of it. I didn't get a chance to taste it, uh, but. The judges loved it, okay, so good. congratulations. Right. I think we saved some for you. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay, that's good. I thought you so, got the presentation place. <laughs> I thought that was yours. No. That's why I made it look so nice. No, no, I wish I got the presentation place. Oh. We're going to keep those when we all go out there up at 540. Okay. Um, so we have them in front of us for, for the photo. Right. Hopefully there's plastic wrap over them. Uh, well, we hope so. <laughs> so so let's talk about potatoes. Uh, David, first, you know, how, do you, how did the competition go for you? Anything you would have done different? Um, nothing I would have done different. I enjoyed the competition, first of all, I mean, with all my peers yeah. here. That was awesome. But I think keeping it simple, keeping it potato-centric, and showing, you know, the audience here how versatile the potato is on the menu. Sure. And granted, it's on almost every menu in every restaurant, from potato chips in a sandwich shop to, you know, a palm puree in a fine you, dining. To your point, if you look at some of these dishes that, that are here, these are extraordinary. Mm -hmm. These aren't, you know, chips or fries or mashed potatoes. What you guys created, I mean, these could be in five-star restaurants, no question about it. Right, and, and that's, I think, the goal for all of us is to have something that people admire, but people will pay for and people will enjoy and always want to go back for that. Yeah. So, you know, and working within the industry, within the potato industry, gives us great exposure to share our knowledge, what we know as chefs, and how, not just easy it is, but how comfortable it could be for the home cook to pull off exactly what we did. Sure. But, so, but actually, yeah, yeah. there were chips and mashed potatoes yes. in some of the dishes. Yes. It's just that we kind of brought it up to we're the to next level, right? right? So it's very familiar, but it's familiar with a twist, right? Which people like, so. So, so Brooke, um, you know, I got some notes from you beforehand. You're saying tater tots are hot. Tater tots, what, what, tater tots are still hot. Yeah. Uh, I just saw something I was reading this morning Next level texture is something that's been predicted as a 2018 trend. So what does that look like? So tater tots are certainly in there. We actually have an event we're doing in a couple of weeks and we're going to cook the tots extra crispy and then leave them at room temperature. So it'll be almost like a popcorn poppable potato instead of just serving them, you know, typically hot, hot and fresh, right? Um, tots are hot whether chefs are making them from scratch and putting ingredients into them or if they're buying a frozen product and then, you know, loading it up treating it like a buffalo wing and tossing it in a sauce, which the, you know, the staff in their kitchen are typically, you know, they know how to do this with sauce in a bowl, right? And then build on top of that. I did um, at home over the holidays for my kids, you know, pulled pork, you know, some barbecue sauce, melted cheese on some tater tots, and they're like, wow, dad, can we have that again, right? And and for, for me, that's stuff we do all the time. I just don't do it at home that much. So that was kind of like, yeah, it all comes around full circle, right? So, so um, I live in Los Angeles here, and we've got a small chain small burger chain called Umami Burger there. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. So Umami uh, doesn't have on the menu tater tots, but you can order them. So it's like a secret menu, right. and they're the tater tots with cheese in them. Okay. And I've got, and, and they're not round, but they're almost like an oblong shape. Okay. And I've got to tell you that when I go there, probably half the tables have <laughs> those on them versus the other fries. Right, okay. Sure. Or and, the sweet potatoes, so yeah, or exactly. Sweet potatoes, yeah, for sure. okay. So, Dave, what's hot for you? Hot for me. Uh, we do a tater tumbler, which is similar to a tater tot, which is very hot. 
but right now gluten free. Potatoes are gluten free. So potatoes are to focus on different items that we could present in the gluten free arena, including gluten free coating. So it's like breadcrumbs, but it is actual potato crumbs. Interesting. Yeah. So if, if you take a look, and you're obviously heavily involved in uh, the retail side of what's going on, how can supermarket retailers really promote potatoes to the next level, to, to what you guys did right here? Right. I think they have to get it in front of the consumer that's you know going up and down the aisles all the time. I think it has to be, they have to comp, yeah, constantly reminded, hey, here's something, here's something new. Uh, a lot of times when we're developing things for retail, for our retail partners, you know, here's a dip or here's another application that you can use to show people, hey, how easy this is to do at home. So it's, you know, it's rule one, get it in their mouth, right? Okay. And for you? And we have all those same resources that we use off of our website for the retailers to pick recipes on there and have tasters, you know, present it or use it in their deli segment. Um, that's a huge push for us this year. And uh, the exposure we get of food shows like this helps sure. spread the word that, hey, well, there's some really cool things you can do with potatoes, not just bake them or fry them. So I'm going to ask you one last question each. Nothing to do with potatoes. What's the hot food trend for 2018? Uh, it's definitely Peruvian. Peruvian. Yeah, okay. definitely is. I think it's Korean with the Winter Olympics. People coming back from Pyeongchang, it's going to be more familiar to a lot of folks. So. Okay, so yep. the bottom line is Peruvian and it's Korean. We're here at the Eye at the 2018 Potato Expo. Going to take a break and we're going to have more chefs coming up.